you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments below. I try to answer them, I really do, but there are a couple of repeats. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna answer them here to the best of my ability as honestly as possible, as well as try to give examples for people who are different from me, okay? But if you know anything about me, you know that I do whatever I want. So, okay, the, one of the first questions that I get a lot is how often do you rinse your hair? If you, so I change up my styles like all the time. I may do twists for like two days and then I'll do a braid out and then I'll do wash and goes. I do a bunch of weird stuff. So I rinse my hair twice a week. That's just what my hair prefers. Um, if you are someone who tends to stretch their hair for a long period of time, I'm on vacation y'all. So just excuse, the wind is open, the windows are open and the wind is blowing, it's beautiful. But anyways, that's what this background noise is. And no, I'm not gonna edit anything, okay? This is reality. Anyway, if you stretch your hair and you do that for most of the week, you can probably get away with rinsing once a week, but um, or even once every two weeks, I don't know. And you can actually, there are some people who will put water, like distilled water in a spray bottle and just spritz at their roots to kind of loosen up the sebum and, and bring it down a little bit and then they're good to go. So it really is just your preference, know your hair. I have a whole video on that, um, on knowing your hair, so that when you try this method, you're not, it's really just like experimental, but with a foundation of knowing your hair, you know, so you don't mess around and go bald. <laughs> but yeah, I rinse twice a week. And my herbal rinses, I will do once a week. So I water rinse at least twice a week. But on one of those days that I water rinse, I will do an herbal rinse. And the next question is, how do you do your herbal rinses and what do you typically use? So again, because I do a bunch of like all the things, I don't have like a specific herbal rinse that I can go to. Um, yeah, like all the time, like consistently. But I will say some of my favorites are very simple and you've seen videos on them. I used to use them when I first started in 2015 and my hair grew like crazy and it was very strong and it was awesome. And that was rice water or fenugreek tea. Either of those things, if there's one thing that I can, if there's, you know, if there's a tip that I can give you, it's to choose to use either rice water or fenugreek tea. And of course, depending on if you know your hair and you know that your hair is protein sensitive or you know that you, yeah, I don't know, just know your hair. And for rice water, what I would say is I used to ferment it for three days. So what would happen is I would get something like this. Let's say I would make this much rice water. But if I'm using this amount, this, let's see, 50 ounces to rinse my hair, I would only fill the fermented rice water about this much. And then the rest would be clean water, distilled water, filtered water, whatever. So do that for both rice water or fenugreek. And then test it out. If you feel like the rice water is is weak, you know, on that first rinse, then increase the rice water. Same with fenugreek. Both of those things, I don't know. I know we know about rice water. We know that rice has an acetal in it, and so it's um, it has like strengthening qualities. With fenugreek, I actually do not know why it is strengthening or why our our hair strands just feel so much stronger after using it. But both of those work. They're amazing. And I can show you all of the different things that I've done with both of those in a separate video. Um, my herbal rinse that I choose to do, I'm trying to be consistent with something. So for the past two to three months, I've been using a concoction of hibiscus, aloe vera, and fenugreek. And I would use that like once a week. And I make enough to where it'll last. I have about a two month supply. I just keep it frozen. And then when I'm ready to use it, I just take a little bit out and I dilute it with water because I like my rinses to be rinses. I don't like like thick stuff on my hair. But if you're someone who's used to like masks and you want something thick, you know, to like sit on your hair for a long while, this is the kind of ingredients that you can mess around with to make it as thin or as thick as you'd like. So that's how I do my herbal rinses. It's really trial and error, but it's mostly just trial because that's what I like to do. And for the most part, I am um, experimenting with things that I either know for sure or am trying to figure out whether or not they will mess up my sebum. So for the most part, if I've done something on this channel um, that I've really liked, um, it's more so to figure out, will this mess up my sebum? What other qualities does it have or does it, you know, give my hair? Is it beneficial or is it just pretty, you know? So there's that. Um, and then I have this whole video 
the same thing with knowing your hair. I had this whole video on like Ayurvedic, just all types of like plants, flowers, you know, roots, <laughs> fruits, um, and herbs that you can use on your hair. I do not know about all of them in terms of whether or not they will affect your sebum, but I do know that they're helpful and very, very, very beneficial when it comes to hair growth and hair health. So check that video out. Um, have I tried onion? Two people have asked me this. No, I have not. I, I've i heard great things about it because you know, onion has sulfur and sulfur is great for scalp health, but I haven't. I just, I don't know. I don't wanna puree an onion, but I mean, try it out. Let me know how it works. I'm sure it'll be great. Um, yeah. Do How do I do my ACV rinse? So I try to show this as much as possible in my videos, but you can actually just Google um, apple cider vinegar rinse and you will find a, a recipe that almost everyone in the natural hair community uses if they do vinegar rinses. It's gonna be one part apple cider vinegar to three parts water, depending on what you're trying to do. So if you're trying to clarify your hair, um, one part, to three parts works well. If you're just trying to do a light cleanse, like sometimes if I'm clarifying my hair, which I will do once a month, but let's say I wanna do it lightly because I like the amount of sebum that's on my hair, then I will do one part vinegar to four parts water. So really just depends. Um, and then also you don't have to use apple cider vinegar. I will say apple cider vinegar has been studied and is known to actually strip your hair um, and clarify your scalp. So it is a, you know, tried and true, amazing ingredient, but you can also try out coconut vinegar. I've tried that out before. Um, rice vinegar. I've tried that before. So, you know, well, does your fancy, but yeah, that's how I do my ACV rinses and I do them once a month. And then this question, I, I don't know how to, so someone has also asked that, can I add lemon to, you can add whatever you want to your apple cider vinegar rinses. Um, I usually just use essential oil. And that's actually what I love about this method too, is that if I wanted to, I could make my hair smell like anything after I'm done with my rinses because you're, you, all you have is your sebum. So literally your hair is just coated with whatever else you're adding on. So you can play around with essential oil mixes. You can even play around with fragrance oils, but I would just be careful. Just make sure that they're safe, um, fragrance oils before you do that. But yeah, I add essential oils to my rinses both herbal and ACV. I don't add lemon um, only because lemon is acidic and apple cider vinegar is already acidic. So I don't, I don't do that. Um, I do try to drink lemon water, that helps me, but yeah, no, I don't, I don't add lemons. But you can, not stopping you, just saying this, I don't. Okay, um, what can I use on my hair? Check out the video that I have. It's like really long and it breaks up like literally the types of grains, the types of roots, plants, flowers, whatever, the types of herbs that you can use on your hair that have been known to contribute to hair health. Okay, and then, oh, okay. So I've seen this a lot too. So there's some people who may have started on their journey and um, maybe you feel like you're not, you can't feel your sebum or you've started and you feel like your hair is too dry, um, or you feel like your sebum is just not coming out fast enough or whatever. So a couple of things. Number one, I will say for anyone who is starting this method, you wanna make sure that you clarify your hair. That was another question. Yes, use a clarifying shampoo. If you are someone who naturally uses like three to five products on your hair, if you're someone who already, you you know, already has like a sulfate free regimen and you like to mix up your conditioners with more edible items than not, then I would say just use an apple cider vinegar rinse. You'll be fine. Just use an apple cider vinegar rinse and then start from there. Um, but if that's not you, definitely use a clarifying shampoo, follow up with a mild apple cider vinegar rinse and then go from there. Um, one of the first videos that I posted on this was me using a banana puree deep conditioner for my hair. And that's on my channel, but also like everyone has, you can use whatever you want, whatever, okay? Bananas, sweet potato, whatever. Just as long as it's conditioning um, and kind of gives your hair a, a light coating as you work, you know, wait for your sebum to travel down, right? As you help your sebum travel down to your, down your hair strands. Um, so there's that. 
Secondly, if you are using super hot water, you may be um, your own enemy of progress. <laughs> hot water is not really necessary for sebum. Sebum is very much like, it, it varies between the consistency of jojoba oil and, and like shea butter at its, you know, at room temperature, like thick shea butter or cocoa butter. Um, I'll say shea butter, cocoa butter is a little bit harder. And so it doesn't take much to warm it up. It doesn't take much to move it. Um, all of that really depends on how you eat and how you drink. If you are someone who consumes a lot of dairy products um, or fats, then you'll find that your sebum has a thicker consistency. It'll feel more like shea butter and it will stick, it'll literally stick to your roots and you will have to manipulate it or use you know warm water a little bit more frequently to move it down your hair strands. If you're someone who drinks a lot of water and you know has a more fibrous um, diet or even something that's well balanced and not super high in fats, then you'll find that your sebum, maybe you won't feel it as much, but it will be more of a jojoba oil consistency and it will spread just a little bit more easily. So know that first, but, but hot water is not, it's not going to help you. Like you need to use lukewarm to warm water. And then, um, and then what I will say is make sure that the water pressure coming out of your shower head, if you are using a shower head, make sure that the water pressure is not so hard. <laughs> um, because you, I mean, you could literally just be like, I don't know how to explain it, but you see what I'm doing with my hands. <laughs> you could literally just be like cleaning it off of your hair as opposed to helping it spread down. So there's that. Um, so what I would suggest is use whatever you're doing, okay? Start again today or tomorrow, use lukewarm water, okay? And try to, you know, massage your scalp a little bit. If you feel something that slightly resembles like an oily feeling or like a silky feeling, like all of a sudden it's slippery on your scalp, that is your sebum. That's your sebum. And you can also tell when you work out and you can feel, you know, kind of like your sweat on, on your scalp. And when you start washing your hair or rinsing your hair, you'll feel your sweat and a little bit of sebum mixed together. That is your sebum. So when you feel that, just lightly, I have videos on this, but you know, just lightly spread it down your hair strands and keep it moving. Um, and if your hair is really dry and you've been doing this for two weeks, it's one of two things. One, like I said, it's super hot water or you're, you're literally just not, you're not, um, I feel like you may be being too rough with your hair. Our finger pads, the same way that we can cleanse our, our skin, right? With just our finger pads and a surfactant is the same way that we can cleanse our scalp, like cleanse like our roots and basically wipe off our sebum if we're not careful. So with enough water pressure and our finger pads, we can remove sebum. So just start with what I said with the lukewarm water. If you feel like your ends are dry, I think the first week that I started, I used just a little bit of shea butter, not too much, just a little bit of shea butter. And I went like a third of the way down on my hair. Um, I'm sorry, from the bottom up. So like a third of my hair strands. And I would just coat the last third of my hair while my hair was a little bit damp. Um, and that was helpful. And shea butter does not affect your sebum at all. It mimics your sebum. So it's just a very helpful technique. So try that. Let me know how that works. Stop using hot water. Stop being rough with your scalp and your hair. And let me know how that works, okay? Starting off is hard. That was the other thing. Do you have any tips? Starting is really hard or I've started and stopped so many times. I've wanted to stop a few times. I mean, it's a little inconvenient, like when you have to rinse your hair every three days, but there's hard water. Oh, that's another thing. Um, okay, so let's talk about this real quick. You, if you are anywhere where you can use a shower filter, please buy one. I have one that I use that I really like from Amazon. I can link it below if you care, but any shower filter will work, okay? Hard water is not gonna be your friend because your goal, right, is to use just your sebum, but hard water is filled with minerals, hard minerals that make it very difficult for your sebum to, to move down your scalp. Um, and so you will have buildup more often, you will have a flaky scalp, all of those things. So get a shower filter, okay? If you can't, or if you, if you can't be bothered, <laughs> if you can't or you can't be bothered, then I know of some people who use bottled water um, or like a big gallon of distilled water that you can find in the baby section of like Walmart or any grocery store. 
try that. And I also will say if you're someone who wants to minimize the amount of water that you're using, I have tried the bowl method. I challenged myself to do that for a month where I was able to rinse my hair every week with just a bowl of water. I was shocked because I, I guess I do be wasting tons of water. I was shocked actually. Um, and I will say that the bowl method was way more efficient than the shower head. The shower head, you know, the water's just kind of going all over. But when you have a bowl and a little cup, like a solo cup or an eight ounce cup, you can actually concentrate the amount of water that you are pouring onto each section and make sure that each section is moisturized and, you know, plumped up with water. And you also can actually fill your sebum just a little bit better. So yeah, try that too. If you're someone who's like, mm -mm, I can't be, you know, you're water conscious, <laughs> definitely do that. The bowl method works with this, okay? But just don't use hard water. Get a bottle, water, get a gallon of distilled water, get a shower filter. That'll save your life. That is a tip. Um, another tip would be to be patient and also to not expect... So like you may expect your sebum to come out a different, some another way than it actually may come out. Your, se your sebum may be thicker than you think. Your sebum may be, you know, not thinner than you think. And so you just kind of have to pay attention. You just have to pay attention to your hair when you're starting this off and be gentle. You massage your scalp every day. That's what I did almost like that whole year. That's probably why my hair grew so much too. Massage your scalp, do a little bit of this, some lights. I don't want to say scratching, but just some light grazing on your scalp just to kind of lift the sebum, lift the sweat. If you work out, this is a great method for you to start because your sebum will start flowing almost immediately. Um, so yeah, massage, do a little bit of grazing on the scalp. Make sure you're bringing your sebum down as much as possible. Try every day or every other day with a little bit of water on your fingertips at the root and just kind of go like this, okay? Gentle, just be gentle, be gentle. Um, another tip that I would say, I already said it in the beginning, is to try and use something strengthening. If you want like an all-in-one rinse or mask, try rice water and aloe vera or fenugreek and aloe vera, or you can use a little bit of honey. But here's what I'll say. If you use honey and really any of these concoctions, but if you use honey in particular, do not make a whole batch of your rinse and then like leave it in the fridge for a month. Like you need to only add honey when you're about to rinse your hair that day. Any other time, honey is sugar. Bacteria love sugar and you're gonna be pouring bacteria on your hair after like four hours. So only add honey right when you are about to rinse your hair and then you're good to go. And I would say like a teaspoon, like don't put too much honey, you don't need it. Honey is a very, very strong humectant. It doesn't take much. If you don't want to use honey, glycerin is another one. Um, aloe vera is also a very, they're all very strong humectants. You don't need a lot. You don't. You mostly need water, okay? Um, the other tips that I have would be to, I know that I started my hair off in twists. You can definitely do that in like single, like mini twists. No, 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 not mini twists, I'm sorry. Small to medium sized twists. Um, all that does is it elongates your hair and it makes your curl, you know, your hair more uniform. And it's easier for your sebum to just travel down. You can do the same thing with braids if you wanted to. Um, it really doesn't matter. So maybe put your hair in twists for like a week, a week or two, and just try what I, you know, the tips that I gave you and see what happens. Um, there was another question and I took a picture of it, but I just can't remember. But I hope that this was helpful and I will try to... If, I mean, if, I don't know. I feel like there's so much information out there when it comes to apple cider vinegar rinses. I don't really want to do a video on that. But anything else, any other herbal rinses that I've tried, I try my best to like film them, put them on so you guys can see whether or not they've affected my sebum. Um, your diet really plays a huge part in how your hair functions with this. So just play around with what I said. Try to be a little bit healthier. <laughs> and drink more water and, you know, let me know how it goes. Okay, I'm trying to get this under 20 minutes. So hope this was helpful. Hit me up if it wasn't or if you have any other questions. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.